Hi, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. I'm a piecer. I love to piece quilts and when you get that top finished it is so exciting and you can hardly wait to have it quilted. Here at the Missouri Star Quilt Company we have a great option for that and we do our own machine quilting. If you'd like to know more about that I'll be talking about that at the end of this video. But so many of you have requested information on how to do your machine quilting yourself at home on your own sewing machine. So we've invited my daughter Hillary, who is a pretty good little machine quilter, in to show you some of the basics on how to quilt your quilt yourself on your own sewing machine. So we hope you enjoy this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. This is my daughter Hillary, and she is a machine quilter. She quilts on her own sewing machine at home, and so many of you have expressed an interest on how to do this on your own sewing machine at home. I thought we'd invite her in and help us with a tutorial and teach you how to machine quilt your own quilts. It's, so, it's really not something that you need to be afraid of. Machine quilting on your, on your home machines is a fairly simple project that we can teach you from start to finish. Awesome, let's get to it. To start your project, you're going to need to make sure you have the correct supplies. That's going to be the most important part of your free motion quilting. You can do it with a long running stitch. That takes a little more time than I generally want to do, but it is possible and works perfectly fine. You can also use these curved safety pins. This is generally what I use are the safety pins because I have them, I have them available and I just pin it. But I generally hand quilt, not machine quilt. Mm -hmm. And they do work really well. They make the process of basting go a lot faster than the hand sewing does. Yeah, because they have that little curve on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Works great. And they sell those here at the shop. Really handy. My favorite way is this basting spray. You can use the basting spray you can get at almost any hobby store. The only thing you really want to look for is that it's for sewing and it's not going to gum your needles up. It holds your project together really nicely and is even faster than the pins. Awesome. I'm all for fast. You know about that. I'm all That's about right. fast. To prep our quilts, we're going to need three pieces. This is our quilt sandwich that we're yeah, working with. this is with. the sandwich. Everybody wants to know what the quilt sandwich is. So this is the sandwich. It's got the bottom. The, yep, uh, this is your backing your piece. Your backing fabric, and you're going to lay it print side down. Correct. And then you will take your batting, which is going to be, you, both pieces you want to be fairly large, uh, several inches larger than your top piece because you're going to need some extra to work with. The fabric will move and give as you c stitch it and you're going to want to make so, sure that you have some extra. So would you call this the double stuff in the middle? That's right. It's if like we're having an Oreo, Oreo sandwich. Like an Oreo sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> no, we are, well, you can if you want. Yeah. We're going to go. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and do this. This is not quite as large as you'll probably want to start with. These were just yeah, some extra pieces want, I had. You'll probably want your backing and stuff to be about two inches, wouldn't you say? Yeah, one to two inches larger. It gives you enough room so that as you're sewing and it does move, you don't worry about going on to the um, border pieces or the, losing the whole backing together. That has happened to she's me. She's been no doing fun. this for a while, so she can do it a little closer, and she knows she's not going to run off the edge, but I'd be worried about some movement of that material, so you want to make sure that that, you know, that stays. And two inches is really a pretty good... Uh, space for you. That should be plenty. So you'll want to just go ahead and trim off the edge of your batting. If you need to trim it all the way around, whatever it is that works best so that you've got it the right shape. You don't want so much extra off the edges that you're fighting with that for space in your machine. Uh, let's go ahead and baste that. Okay, wait. I'm a mother. <laughs> I'm going to slide this under here. So what we do is we're going to just take this off, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, you want to start with your backing piece. You need to be able spray, to get that open. Spray a little layer on here. You want to make sure and cover your surface because it will leave a sticky residue, although Hillary assures me it will go away within a day or two. I've sprayed it right <laughs> on my carpet before and I haven't <laughs> had anything left. That's That's terrible. Don't tell my mother. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay. There we go. Now it doesn't matter if you spray the fabric or the batting, just so long as there's something for it to attach to. You're gonna and we do start with our it's backing. Just, that easy, huh? Just it's spray real, it on yeah, it. you don't want to. You don't want to make puddles. You don't want to get it so that it looks so just, wet. Just spray it on, and it will stick. And then you have to lay that out. There we go. Press that down a little bit. See here, I've got the batting is a little bit in from the backing, and that's not going to matter because I have that extra space on the edge. Okay. But you can see it's. Do so you want to make stuck. sure that it's like flat on the other side? You do. That's okay. a good thing to check because. So we got that all flat. Yeah, even if you press it really good, there could still be wrinkles. Now, before I spray this one to attach it, because even though it is repositionable, it's easier if you check your positioning before you spray it. 
and just do this. You can kind of see through the batting where your backing lays and that way you can just adjust as needed and it gives you an idea where it's going to go. We're still going to take it off to spray it, but at least I well, know generally can, the placement. Maybe we can like roll it back like this. That definitely works. Let's go ahead and spray that. Okay, so we'll put that over there. Okay. And then we can like roll this section up right here. Yep. <clears throat> can you feel where it's I starting could, to be sticky? I could feel where it was starting to be sticky. Okay, there we go. And that's all it is. We just basted our little quilt. That is awesome. That is quick and awesome. Okay, that's way faster than pinning. <laughs> <laughs> Have I sold you? <laughs> You've sold me. I like the basting spray. Okay, good. Okay, now, well, here's if our you sandwich. are a brand new quilter, would you just take this to your machine or? Not at all. Okay. Before you start your free motion quilting, there are definitely some things you want to do to practice. There's... Well, let's talk about the machine first. Sure. The machine is, um, this part right in here is called the throat, and that is where, you know, if you're quilting, the bulk of your machine, of your quilt is going to go up in that throat. So the bulk of your, um, the bulk of your, your quilt is going to go up in this throat. So you want to make sure that you have room. A lot of people, um, I know they'll, they swear by starting in the middle, but Hillary generally starts on the edge and works out because her projects are small. That's right. I don't do anything larger than about a lap size quilt on my home machine. It just gets to be too much for me to fight with. Something that if you are doing a, um, excuse me, if you are doing a larger quilt and you're going to need space, what you can do is roll the edge of your project. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so that you can fit that in here. Okay. Generally so with the top onto side the up. So the machine then. You have a different foot on here. I do. I do. This is called your machine basting, free motion quilting, darning foot. These are all names that they can be found under and they can be purchased for almost any machine. There are a few that don't have it and that's just, that's... I'm sorry, <laughs> but this is what about what they look like. They're going to have either a plastic or metal base with some circular type toe is what they call it. This whole thing is the foot. This is the toe. It will have some of them have an open toe and those are actually really nice because you can see very clearly what you're doing. I do like the clear foot because it also gives you a better view of where the stitches have been and where you're going with your stitching. So then you just put that on your machine. Mm -hmm. To do that, you've taken off the entire foot of the other one. Generally, it's screwed on with a little spot here. And you hook it and screw it in there. And then it's ready to go ahead and do your stitching. You also... Okay, now, what about your tension? Oh, tension. Let's do that one. We've got tension up here. Most of our machines are going to be set on an auto tension. And that is not very convenient for your machine stitching. Okay. Because that w the auto tensions work off of feeling how tight the fabric is underneath of the presser foot. Oh, okay. And so because you're doing the free motion quilting, it's not pushing on your fabric at all. So oh. it doesn't know how tight it needs to be, and so it makes it really loose, usually. Okay, so, and it's the top tension that you want to change, not the bottom tension. Exactly. Okay. I don't mess with my bobbins tension at all with that. And you turn this, like, way up to a high number. I do. Much higher than I usually would do it when doing okay, it manually. So like, on this machine right here, she's got it on, it's like eight and a half or nine. So mm -hmm. it's, like, way up there in the big numbers. Yeah, okay. and that, that works pretty well for my machine. Something else that you want to do is you want to lower your feed dogs. My s spot for doing oh, wait, that. The, the feed dogs are these pokey things right here, right? Yeah, that's okay. what pulls your fabric through so that yeah. the sewing actually right. works. You hit your, there's a little stitch, there we go. Is that the right way? There you yes, go. <laughs> they're down. You can check that by rolling this and it, you'll be able to see whether or not these metal bars are coming up to pull the fabric. And so they don't, um, if they don't, uh, so you want those out of there? You, want you those do. Okay. You do, because you don't want your fabric to be pulled any direction other than where you're going to be pushing it. Okay, so you're going to move it with your hands then? Yes. All right. That's another thing that you can do with your hands. Like now, are you thread through. You, well, some people will use gloves or there are pads, things that you can use. I really, I don't use those because for me, I feel like it's a, almost a loss of control. Some people swear by them and if that's you, yeah, I think those you're are welcome those to it. Yeah, I think those things that you have to use what you feel comfortable with. Yeah, that's a preference thing completely and for me, it's easiest to just use my hands so that I can feel it and move it through. Awesome. And do you change how fast you're sewing ever? Um, that will come as you practice. When I started, I started it probably in the middle, but that may have still been a little too fast for me. I okay. Some of my stitches were really tight. 
but as you practice it you'll get more smooth with it and you can you just don't you want to make sure that your hands aren't moving faster than your machine is going oh okay because then you can end up with really long stitches and that's not what you want right so, so practice is key on this practice is key here are some pieces that I can show you I've practiced with these are some different um, patterns and before you start your project you're going to want to decide what pattern you're going to be using these ones I've done are some of them, this one in particular is a little more advanced but not really not that difficult and still. This, this would be like a cobblestone pattern where you're going around and making like um, like a street or a bubbles yeah. in water or something like that. Yeah and it's really fun it's a good filler uh, it's simple. None of these patterns are terribly specific. You can use them and you don't have to worry about mistakes. That's one of my favorite things about free motion quilting is that there are going to be mistakes and it won't matter. Yeah, it, won't matter it won't matter at all. Matter. You can now, see a not lady, a lady wrote me one time and she was saying that when she does her machine quilting, she uses these little scraps of fabric like this. She just cuts them out, makes little quilt sandwiches. So we did the same thing. We spray basted these on here and put them together. And then and she would try different stitches and she'd, she'd keep them together like on a little ring thing so that when she went to do a quilt, she would look through them and see the things that, you know, the different ideas that she could um, do with her quilt. And I thought that was a great idea. Since this is all about practice makes perfect, then you want to... These are things you'll want to try and make sure you're good at, right? Absolutely. Okay. It gives you a great chance to get started without working on the actual project. So this one, this little piece here, you've already you've this basted has been, it? Yeah, it's been basted. You can It oh, kind okay. of pulls apart. There's the Perfect. backing, batting, top and piece. And so what stitch are you going to do? We are going to learn the stipple. The stipple is the stipple. It's our easy, versatile pattern. It's a great one to start with. Um, it gives it a real antique look when you're done. Mm -hmm. It kind of helps the fabric bunch up a little bit. Really simple. So we're going to go with that one to begin with. Okay, so you've got your... Oh, also, again, I'm starting at the corner. Okay. okay. So she's going to start at the corner. And um, what... Uh, do you do a row? Do you do... How do you do it? I do mine a row across, probably about a six inch row. Okay. It gives me room to move the pattern so that it doesn't look too repeated. You want it to look very random. Awesome. Well, let's see okay. what you got. Okay. We're going to go ahead. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As I start the stitching, something else that's convenient, if you have a needle down position, that's really helpful to keep your spot in your yeah because if you have to stop you don't want you don't want to have to find that needle spot again yeah otherwise you end up with moved yeah. stitching and it's not not as pretty no. after I've done a couple of just a couple of rounds on my stitching I am going to look underneath the bottom of it to check my tension this the tension looks pretty good you'll know right away if your tension is off so oh, yeah what well, how will you know because on the curves it will pull. It looks like it has teeth coming oh, into the okay. curves. Okay. I always call those eyelashes. <laughs> I, eyelashes work too. Teeth. <laughs> well, I have a little boy at home. I've got dragon teeth there going you go. most you of the time. Dragon teeth everywhere. All right. So we're going to keep curving. Something I watch for in my stipple is to make sure that I stay a little ways away from my other stitches. You don't want to cross over any of the previous lines that you've sewn. I'm just gonna watch. You can. It doesn't have any specific pattern that you do. You can do a ribbon like this, but you don't want to do that for too long, or it's gonna start looking repeated. So you come back around, and you go in and fill in the gaps. And I'm gonna do something. It's about six inches. You can see I've only done. That's between four and six inches yeah. even. So I'm gonna. That space is empty. I'll come back to that as I finish my row. This, this is around. actually really mesmerizing. Do you find the more you do it that it's really relaxing? It's very relaxing. I've been uh, fairly surprised with these last couple of <laughs> rounds that I've done my free motion stitching. It's gotten so much smoother. There's much less concern and worry going. Well, it's, a, it's really um, it's really enjoyable. Yeah. And it comes out and you look at it and you're like, this is my, I did this. <laughs> I've had <laughs> people... Awesome. You can you impress people with these projects and look, you can see not all of my rounds are the same width. I've got some that are wide, some that are thin. This one actually did touch one of the other rows. I am not concerned because that's it's there's when enough going all, on. Yeah, you get it all in a big quilt, it's just not gonna make that much difference. Absolutely. So we just keep going. That is something we try to avoid, but we don't worry ourselves over it because it's not worth it. 
And that basting just keeps everything together. It's awesome. Isn't it great? It moves through there without any problem. I don't have to take out any pins as I go. I have short loops, large loops. It's a really easy thing to do on your home machine. Okay, here I've come to the top edge and I actually came off of my top a little bit. That's okay. You just keep going. You want to watch to make sure that you're not pulling any puckers through with your fabric, but really, it doesn't matter if you go off. You just keep going and I'm done. Wow. There we go. Lift your needle up. Well, that's awesome. And that's our piece. That is great. So, so how long would you say you would have to practice before you get like really comfortable with enough to do your piece? I, I guess don't that's think different there's any everybody. specific time. Yeah, yeah. That's different with some everybody. Some people take to it real quick and some people take a little longer. I don't think you should be discouraged with how long it takes you to yeah. get used to it because no matter how long it takes you, you're gonna, you need to make sure that you're happy with that final product. Okay, so are we ready to start the project then? We are ready. Awesome. I'll move these out of the way. Here's our basted project. I wanted to show you too. This is one that we basted with pins and it's really simple to do. They're about a hand's width apart, each of the pins, and we stagger them a little bit. That's just our other option for prepping your project. Yeah, so that, um, that I mean, that is a, it's a, it's a good option. It know? is. It's and a very good option. You would, you would have to stop and go along a little ways and take your pin out, but you want to make sure that needle stays down so you don't move. So you don't lose your spot. That's okay, right. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's get started. Now, because I'm starting at the edge, I will just sew my rows. But if you do decide, if you have a little bit of a larger project and you decide that you want to start in the middle, you just you pick your spot, start in the middle, and just do your stippling around through here. And you basically have split your quilt into quarters. And you stipple all through your first quarter. And then you just come back up here, find your start point, match it with your needle, and do your next quarter. Oh, okay. So that's how you do it from the center of your quilt. But you like the edge. On my small projects, it's just that much easier have, for me. I have so many children that like living on the edge. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm all about convenience. <laughs> all about convenience and living on the edge. <laughs> Losing my presser foot. There you go. Uh-huh. Okay. Make sure your presser foot is down. It's a little harder to tell when you're using your free motion quilting stitch because it... Um, well, it's so floaty. It's so floaty. There is no pressure that's on the not a real fabric. Floaty. That's just a, you know one of those words. It's a don word. Now this little quilt that she's made, she's she's just took a little piece of fabric and a charm pack yep. and split it up and made little borders down the side of it. And it's actually going to be a changing pad. They're really cute. She does she does some really cute things and cute ideas. So the fabric you've used on this project is that Sherbet Pips by Anila Huli for Moda, right? Correct. And it's made a really nice little baby quilt. All the little sketchy prints, those are some of my favorites. There we go. Now if you want to, um, I know on my big machine in, uh, in the other room there's a uh, stitch regulator on that. So I you just kind of do this with your hands, how fast you're going. Yeah, I've never actually had a stitch regulator and you can see some of my stitches are a little long and some are a little shorter. As you practice, it gets a little, it gets more even. Okay. But a stitch reg regulator is really helpful. The nice thing about the clear foot, you can see as you come up to this, I'm getting to a curve and I just pull it around and keep going. You just keep the wiggly tube for your basic stipple. Stipple is such a good, um, it's just a great uh, stitch. Whenever I do old quilts on the big machines, mm -hmm. they, I always suggest a stipple because a lot of times they'll bring in these antique quilts that are just gorgeous, but they're all like hand pieced together. And so it's Ooh. all these teeny little pieces that are hand pieced and the stippling just goes around and kind of catches all the little pieces and it just makes a really nice um, quilt pattern. Right. Yeah, every so often you want to keep checking your tension because we know that doesn't always stay the way we like it to. But that's basically what you do. So the finished product. Mm -hmm. This is one of my changing pads that we've finished up. It, you can see the stipple is really nice on there. It's definitely not perfect. but And then you just, you just bind this like you do a normal little quilt then? Like yeah. you just put it on normally? It, you do, this and you don't lose any. Project. You don't lose any of the pattern in here with the stipple. It just makes it look all antiquey and bunchy and fun. 
Awesome. Really easy for anyone to and be able so to do. And so then when you, this little thing, you, you see that she has this little, this little strip here. So then you like fold this into thirds mm -hmm. and, and roll it up. roll it up and you can stick it in your purse or your diaper bag. There'll, yep, we'll put a little piece of Velcro on there and it'll hold it on. Perfect. Then you don't have to lay the baby on anything. That's right. You must change a lot of diapers. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> I sure do. That was one of the first I projects. I don't anymore. No more for me. No diapers. <laughs> Anyway, this is, this is about it for us on machine quilting. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial with Hillary and I from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Okay, I'm back and I hope you enjoyed that. If you decide that you've got some projects that are too big to handle on your little machine or it's not your thing, we've got a great option. We'll take you through the website and show you exactly how to mail in your quilt so that you can get that done quickly and easily. So to get your quilt quilted, it's actually very easy. Here I am on MissouriQuiltCo.com and I'm going to scroll down here to the machine quilting by mail and click on that. It takes me to this page right here and I'm going to add this to my cart. That takes you to this page where you get to fill out all the information. So be sure and read all of this information and then you're going to start choosing. This is the fun part. The height or the width of my quilt is 56 inches wide and it's 72 inches tall and my quilt has some garden type uh, features on it so I'm going to choose these cute dragonflies there's loads of designs and a beige background I think would be good I like it when the quilting kind of melds in on these next options you need to remember that all of them have to be checked so make sure that you read them and you can have your quilt bound. I love to get a finished project, so I'm going to check have my quilt bound. Um, my backing is already the correct width. Uh, I am including my own backing, so I'll check there. And then you have to read and agree to the terms below and check that. Now I'm going to put a comment in the comment because I want to make sure the thread is the right color. So I am going to put um, make sure thread blends. And so then, you know, whoever is quilting it will check it and make it sure. It gives you the amount and then you're going to go right over here to add to cart. So now we have that quilt in our cart and we just need to proceed to the checkout. Once you've gone through the checkout process, all you have to do is box that quilt up and send it to us. So now we have your quilt, and we're going to be quilting it on our Gamel Statler Stitcher machine. Love this machine, it is amazing. It's completely computerized, and so it can do just anything. As soon as we finish it, we will ship it right back to you. So I hope this gives you some options on how to finish your quilt, and we hope you enjoyed these tutorials from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.